Today is July 26, 2015, coming right along. Geology, the main principles in geology, are very short-sighted. So, I call this talk the short-sightedness of main geolo geology principles. I'm probably going to make a different name for it for the video, but that's what we're going to overview today. This is the Earth. You have your inner core, your outer core, your inner mantle, and your outer mantle, and you have the crust. Now, I'm not saying it's perfectly differentiated like that. But this is just representative of structures that would have taken time to form, as you will see later in this talk, why I'm pointing that out. Now, for the most part, geology and geologists, when they learn about the Earth, they have certain assumptions and they think about the world in the specific way that they're trained to think about the world and to think about their studies in. But that leads to very uh, poor reasoning behind a lot of the theories that they have. For instance, you have the principle of uniformitarianism. Basically, that's the principle of slow, steady change over time. It's the idea that what is happening now was probably happening in the past as well. So, in other words, it can be stated, the key to the past is present, right now, inside of the crust only. Now, the principle of uniformitarianism should be applied to the entire star's evolution as it cools and dies. But we'll go over that in a little bit. You have the principle of intrusive relationships. Now, I'm not going to go over all of these. I just want to lay them out for you guys so you can look them up. They're on Wikipedia. Just type in this. Principle of cross-cutting relationships. Principle of inclusions and components. Principle of original horizontality. Horizontality, meaning all the layers are horizontal. The principle of superposition, this isn't quantum mechanics nonsense, this is geology. And the principle of faunal secession, that has to do with uh, fossils, I believe. Now, all these principles have to deal with a crust only. This is very, very, very myopic, meaning not, it's very, very short-sighted. You can only see what's right in front of you. Because what that means is that Geologists, when they make their main principles, they have only been referring to the crust and the crust alone. Now, I'm not too sure about you, but don't you consider that the Earth might just be a three-dimensional structure? It's not just the surface that we have to concern ourselves with if we're going to appropriately uh, geologically date the Earth and to figure out how it formed. We can't just look at the surface and assume it was always like this, being solid liquid structure throughout its evolution. We have to look at the entirety of the Earth and the vast three-dimensional structure that it's comprised of. In other words, geologists, they sort of look at the Earth as being, you know, the surface area. But what it actually is, is volume. It's a cubed understanding of the, uh, the internal structure. You have your length, you have your width, and you have your height, meaning it's a big ball. Everything that the geologists use for their main principles only focus on the crust. Most of them don't even concern this. And of course, you know, you have your understanding of internal structures of the earth, but none of them really explain or have any principles for why it is such a vast three-dimensional structure to begin with. Just by looking at this, it's easy to assume that the Earth is just a single, thin, rocky plate that's completely hollow in the center. And now we know why there are people out there that believe that Earth is hollow, is because they took this principles and they applied it to its logical sequence. None of this stuff in the center is really all that important. But basically, we know better, but geologists, they only look at the ground. And my main point through the theory of you know, stellar metamorphosis 
is they should have been looking at the sky too. Because then they would find that we have gaseous and plasmatic objects, very, very energetic objects flying about in outer space. And we should have made the logical conclusion that rocky and liquid structures were, you know, very common as well as there are other common types of objects as well. We could see many billions of them with our telescopes. They're called stars. But basically, they should have been looking at the sky too, because essentially the Earth is in the sky to somebody else from another planet. So yeah, there was that myopic uh, short-sightedness that got a hold of them as well. So what I'm suggesting here for the whole point of this talk is to introduce a principle uh, to really get it across the Earth as a three-dimensional structure, not 2D, focusing on the crust only, it is the principle of differentiation, meaning core and internal structure formation. Now, the principle of differentiation means in order to have a differentiated body, you have to have the central objects forming first. And that's very similar to, I guess you could say, horizontality, because as you go deeper and deeper and deeper in the crust, you go further and further back in the Earth's uh, uh, crust formation, in the Earth's age. So basically, you, you can take that concept, I believe. Well, obviously, that includes horizontality. So if your crust was bent, then you can assume that it was, it was flat at one point. I think that's what that principle means. But essentially, this is the principle that you can continue going through the crust, OK? And then all the way through the core, many thousands of miles into the core, to realize that this inner core was the first object to form as the star was evolving. So basically, you start out, I'm going to erase some of this. You start out with a really hot, big, bright object. Now, I'm not too sure how the star forms. There are many different ideas behind that. But once you have a really big, hot star that's forming, or that's formed, we can start from there. It gravitationally collapses, releases heat and energy very slowly, and it becomes smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. But as that happens, you have the material clumping together in the center of the star. And as it cools and shrinks, different layers get added onto the interior of it. So the principle of differentiation means the core is the first object to form as the star evolves, meaning the crust is the last object to form. And it means the crust is also very much younger than the core. So if we were to radiometrically date or figure out how old the crust is in any way, any single way at all, it automatically means the core is vastly older because it had to have differentiated all that distance up until it got to the crust. And that actually means that we might be standing on an object that is much greater than four and a half billion years in, a in age. Personally, I, I would propose that the Earth might just be into the trillions of years old. Billions, I mean, that's a long time. But if the crust is four and a half billion or three and a half billion years, and that's the last very thin two-dimensional thing to form, or I should say 3D, but it's very, very thin, and it could be considered two-dimensional. But if that's the last thing to form, then how is it that that core is younger than the crust? It just doesn't make any sense. The core had to be the first object. Think of like a building. If you pour concrete into a large skyscraper, you start from the bottom up, right? If you try to build a skyscraper or a house without a foundation, it will collapse on itself. So essentially, that is what stars do. They build their foundations first, and then all the material deposits onto the central object. Of course, it's gaseous structure, meaning 
their assumptions of the Earth being always solid and liquid structure are false. The Earth was plasmatic and gaseous before it became solid and liquid structure as it was evolving. So basically, principle of differentiation, you form your core first and you work your way outwards. Now, this is another problem because I see Electric Universe falls for the same uh, myopic uh, understanding as uh, basic geology uh, geologists because they only focus on the crust when they're trying to explain how it all came to be how it is, forgetting that the entire Earth could expand and contract very greatly and that the Earth was in much different phases of matter earlier in its past. So to say, you know, electric scarring is what made the Earth how it is, is to ignore all of the Earth's evolution. All right, today is, so you're gonna get that July 26, 2015. Have a good day, everybody.